I'm not here to answer your goddamn questions. Now shut up. Shut up. My name is Melanie Darling, and I am the administrative law judge that is will be presiding today. To my right on the dais is Commission President Michael Peavy, the assigned Commissioner Mike Florio, and the co-assigned administrative law judge Kevin Dudney. Before we begin, a couple of safety points. When did you start talking with Turn? and the Office of Ratepayer Advocate about settling the case? We had reached out to turn. Uh, it was late in May of 2013, and I believe the initial discussions uh, were held mid to late June of 2013. Now, while you were having those secret negotiations that some of the settling parties were not invited to, uh, some of the, the opponents were not invited to participate, you also were having ex party meetings with members of the commission. Was Southern California Edison having ex party meetings with commissioners while the secret negotiations were taking place? The only ex party uh, communications I had with commissioners was following the phase one proposed decision, and it was noticed. Were other Southern California Edison? agents, officers, employees having ex parte communications with the commissioners during the time of the secret negotiation? Were, were you? Or were they? Southern California Edison has ex parte communications with commissioners on multiple matters all of the time. So, How many times have you spoken to Mr. Peavy since November of 2012? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. Sustained. I, let me give you my offer of proof. It's our contention that the representation by the commission that there was going to be an investigation into the reasonableness of Southern California Edison's deployment of the defective steam generators was a promise of an investigation with the intent not to perform it. It is our contention that you, Ms. Darling, Judge Darling, entered a ruling that put the investigation off into the remote future in order to avoid any such investigation. It's our position that Mr. Peavy helped to orchestrate this settlement through Mr. Friedman and others, and it wasn't a settlement negotiation. It was a meeting to figure out how not to have the reasonableness investigation. The rulings that you made prohibiting any kind of discovery into the relevant issues, this, when the, when the, when the uh, settlement was announced, the coordinated press releases that falsely stated from Mr. Florio and Mr. Peavy that the parties had settled, which was picked up as part of the blitzkrieg in which the ratepayers were misinformed that they were going to get a $1.4 billion refund, was a collusive, not bona fide basis for this settlement. And we have a right to try to develop that record which you are not permitting us to do. And let me just ask let, this. All right, let, me, let me just ask Mr. Peavy a question. No, you, have a, Peavy, no, you don't have a you question have to me. Did you have any discussions no. with any parties no. about the settlement process while it was taking place, sir? Will you put that on the record? And same with Mr. Florio. Will Ms. you put that on the record? Mr. One of, Gary. One of the no. bases for you not to find the settlement to be fair, legal, and reasonable is if there was collusion. You are now interfering no. with, there is no. an obligation. You are fiduciaries. Mr. Peavy, you're a fiduciary. Mr. Florio, you're a fiduciary. You have an obligation to put on the record if you had any knowledge of the settlement negotiations or in any way participated in them while they were underway. Did you, or I'm asking either one of you and both of you, did you or did you not have such information and such participation? As far as turn goes, I think that the general knowledge my relationship with Turn is to be uh, fair, chilly, and I have never talked to Mr. Friedman on this topic during that whole time at all, period. Mr. Friedman, that's it. Sorry.
What about Southern Cal Edison? Sorry. About Edison? I'm not here to answer your questions. I'm not here to answer your goddamn questions. Now shut up. Shut up. Prior to filing the motion, the settling parties convened a settlement conference with notice to all parties as required by our rules of practice and procedure. I take exception to that. Factually, that is incorrect. The parties were not invited to participate. Mr. Was, I, I just may, I want to put my objection on the. If you're going to make a record, I'm going to object when you do so. Thank you. I will give you. You may have your comments when it's your turn to speak, Mr. Gary. I'm objecting to your statements on the record at the appropriate time. When you make an objectionable statement, I have a right to object, and I uh, interpose the objection. You incorrectly stated that the that there was the settlement was in compliance with Rule 12. You heard Her Honor say this, this this afternoon that there was a conference held. You remember her, remember her Honor said there was a conference held? No, I said there was a notice of a settlement conference to make no, you sure that your question is answered. No, you said there was a conference held. That's what you said. Don't misstate my... I'm not misstating You it. are. Mr. Gary, if you're going to use my words, you're going to use them accurately or not at all, the period. will reflect what you said. Yes, it will. Twice. Yes, it will. Okay. Prior to filing the motion, the settling parties convened a settlement conference with notice to all parties as required by our rules of practice and procedure. Here, SCE had determined that Mitsubishi made errors in designing. You see that? Yes. Where in the record is there support for the errors in designing that Southern Cal Edison determined were made? Can you please tell us where, if anywhere, there's any factual support for the factual assertion that SCE determined there were errors in the design of the steam of the replacement steam generators that were deployed at San Onofre. I cannot. Okay. Did SCE investigate whether SCE made errors in the design of the steam generators that were deployed at the San Onofre nuclear power station as part of the steam replacement program approved by the PUC in December 15th of 2005. SCE conducted exhaustive uh, investigations uh, utilizing outside experts. We did that in order to pursue our restart and to uh, build our case for making a claim uh, against Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. And will you tell us, sir, where in this record the product of your investigation into whether SCE officials had any responsibility for design errors for the replacement steam generators that were deployed in the San Onofre nuclear power plant, where in this record is any such information? Uh, I, same quote, same answer, I cannot. What is the basis of your personal knowledge of Southern Cal Edison executives, agents, officers, employees' involvement in the design process? Uh, reviewing past materials uh, as we investigated uh, causes such that we could uh, come up with a restart plan and pursue that, and also investigating causes uh, uh, to make our claim against Mitsubishi uh, uh, we read uh, past documents uh, associated uh, with the uh, design phase of the project. And are those documents in the record 
available to the commission to evaluate the reasonableness of this proposed settlement, sir? Uh, all of those documents are not. In the record, there's nothing in the uh, record that where Southern California Edison has explained what it thought the strength of the case against it was that led to the settlement, true? True, not in the record. You're familiar with the anti-vibration bar team, correct? I am. Were you a member of that team? I was not. Do you know who was a member of that team? I don't recall. Have you made it? Did you know at some point who the members were? I read the names and where did uh, you in read past the names? documents. Where did you read the names? In past documents. And were those documents provided to the commission for an evaluation of the strength of the case that was uh, that the ratepayers have against Southern California Edison that they'd acted unreasonably in connection with the deployment of the steam generators? Uh, those documents were not provided to my knowledge. Did you sign any declarations that have been provided to the commission in which Southern California Edison discusses the strength of the case against Southern California Edison that ratepayers have that it acted unreasonably? I have not signed any declarations. Have you provided any timesheets or time records illustrating your attorney's review of that question to the commission? I have not. Is there anything before the commission to establish the sufficiency of the settling party's investigation into the extent to which Southern Cal Edison was responsible for the RSG design errors? There is not. Okay. Now, did you conduct an investigation that if the commission were to find that Southern California Edison acted unreasonably, that it would be that the potential recovery to ratepayers would not just be the cost of the replacement steam generators, but it would be the full cost of the failure of those generators rendering the plant unable to produce additional power. Did you conduct any investigation along those lines? I'm talking about where you got your financial people to sit down and look at the question of if our unreasonable behavior of deploying the steam generators after we were informed of design issues and the commission were to decide that we acted unreasonably because of that, it could affect not only just the recovery of the replacement steam generator costs, but it could affect our ability to recover at the, for the base plant, for example. Did You didn't read the uh, ratepayer protest in this case that asserted, for example, like Ms. Hendricks, that asserted that uh, Southern Cal Edison acted unreasonably in deploying the steam generators? I realize that a lot of people have called into question our prudence. Okay. We believe that we acted prudently based on our review and we were prepared to litigate that. Okay. So we that's... settled the case uh, and we believe that disallowing the steam generators and the costs associated with pursuing restart, the $100 million in O&M of incremental inspection and repair costs is a reasonable outcome that falls uh, within the range of possibilities had we been found imprudent. But okay. we believe that we were prudent in our actions. All right. Then we agree. Where is that in the record? Where is what you just said that, 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 that verifies that you actually went through that process, where is that in the record? Before the commission, so they can evaluate whether in fact you did that. It is not in the record. Okay. Okay. Did you, did you, Mr. L L Lissinger, you are, you're not just the president of the company, but you're also a shareholder, are you not? I am. Do you live in the southern, uh, in SC East territory? I do. Okay. Now, when you announced this uh, settlement, uh, your, the value of your stock shot up about $160,000, true? Objection, relevance. It's Sustained. Relevant. It's relevant to his testimony. He's under oath. His credibility is at issue. Whether he's making money off of this settlement is an issue that you have to take into consideration. The, step, the moment he put his hand up and swore, his credibility was at issue. This is a proper uh, financial motivation cross-examination question that any court would allow. Well, 
it's amazing how you're able to jump to the conclusion of what any and every court would do. Unfortunately, that isn't the, the rules that are operating in this commission. You have a narrow scope here, and you have exceeded it. You may okay, move so on. Okay, so you're not going to make him answer the question of whether his stock value shot up $160,000 the, the few days after this announcement was made. You offer me some proof as to how that leads to a relevant con uh, evidence as to a contested because issue of fact. Because it goes to the fact that he wants this approved not because it's fair to the ratepayers, but because he's going to make money off of it, as the others are. That's why. And I know I, I, no, I, I stand with the commissioners that they don't realize that, pe that this is about people making money and the, and the ratepayers having to pay for it. And if that comes as a shock to the commissioners, I'm, I'm really sorry that, this is, that people are uh, that naive. So, is that true, sir, that Southern California Edison through you reported to the financial analyst community that Santa Nova, or that Southern California Edison earnings went up as a result of taking San Onofre out of commission? Did you do that? Our previous guidance to investor analysts were based on no return on investment at San Onofre. Uh, given this settlement uh, included a debt level return on the debt portion of our financial structure for the base plant and half of a preferred return on the preferred a portion of the financial structure. Uh, we provided our analysts with a small estimate of earnings increase if the settlement uh, were to be approved. And, and so the answer to my question is yes. Yes. Thank you. Does that conclude your questions, Mr. Aguirre? Well, it, I have many more questions, but I know that I'm being restricted. We're spending three hours on a $3 billion All right. settlement. All right, so the answer is, is no, Mr. Aguirre? No, the answer is no or yes. I'm making my record. I'm making my no, record. No, you're not it's making a, a record. A billion dollars an hour. No. You spent five days on, on or seven Mr. days Geary. on the entire process, and I renew my objection. This is an inadequate time, an inadequate review, inadequate record, and I renew my objection to the shortness of the hearing. It is not a bona fide evidentiary hearing, and I again request that you allow for a proper review with proper findings, proper basis for those findings, as I have already indicated in our prior objections to these proceedings. The only comment I would make is that I came here today hoping to be educated. I've, I walk out of here without a uh, that happening. I'm very disappointed by the whole uh, uh, back and forth here. I, it has not illuminated the settlement one iota.